Hi there, my name is Etra with Mind Studios, and congratulations! You made it to the last part of our tutorial series all about making your own game in Universal Fighting Engine. For the last time, and especially for this last video, if you haven't seen the overview video in the top right, I highly recommend you watch that to learn about how to follow along with this series. Today we're going to build and export our game for a Windows and WebGL online release. We'll check out the different ways the game can be deployed in set or custom scripted game modes. We'll add our credits, select correct quality in window settings, make sure our scenes have their lighting built and are arranged correctly, export our game, and finally talk about what resources can help you continue your UFE journey. For the last time, we'll go to the heart and soul of our project, the global settings. And what we want to check out here is the deployment options. This allows us to make builds of our game that is either the full game or just certain game modes. By default, we can set the game up to launch in versus mode, training mode, or challenge mode when the play button is pressed. This can be useful if you want to quickly make a build of a certain game mode. However, these deployment options are much more useful for when you want to make a custom game mode or load UFE on top of a more standard Unity scene. So for example, I can tell UFE I want to start this demo 2D fighter scene in versus mode. From an outside scene, I can have this button run a script like this one here. What this does is it sets our versus mode characters, it sets whether or not they are AI controlled, and it sets the stage. And then once those are all set for versus mode, then it loads our scene, which has the game loaded in versus mode. So in this case, we just went from a custom menu to a loaded UFE battle. But you can additively load UFE like this into any Unity project. For example, you could make a third-person exploration game and then load in UFE for just the battles. Additively loading UFE into other games or scenes is something we'll touch on in a part 11 or an advanced concepts video later. But since we are mentioning deployment options now, I wanted to touch on the fact that custom deployment options and loading UFE on top of another project or with a fully custom interface is something you can do. For now, I recommend just setting your deployment options to the default full interface mode. The second thing I'm going to change is the credit screen, so I properly credit all the wonderful YouTubers listed here for providing their characters for this series. The next thing we want to look at is game quality settings, and to get a good visual of that, I'm going to run our game here. Then I'm going to go over to Edit, Project Settings, and Quality. And as you can see here, I've got Ultra selected for our in-editor view. If I change the quality level here from Ultra to very high, high, medium, or so on, you can see how it affects the game above. Now if I stop the game, you'll see that the quality level by default for both Windows export and WebGL exports are on default at very low. Very low might be the perfect setting for our WebGL build, but for our Windows, Mac, and Linux build, I'm going to set their build settings to Ultra. While we're here, we can go to Player to change the game icon, name, resolution, and whether or not the game should start in full screen. I'll update a few settings here. The next thing to do is go to any of our stages that are scenes and properly build their lighting. To do that, we need to go to Window, Rendering, and Lighting, and just click Generate Lighting. It doesn't make a huge difference on my two stages here, but for stages with more light sources and darkness, this will make a huge difference. Once all our scenes are properly set up, we need to add them to our game build. For this, go to File, Build Settings, and here we can add our root scene and our scene-based stages. Since I didn't change my root scene, it's still called Demo Fighter 2D, so I'll drag that and add it in. And I'll also go grab my other two stages. When you have your scenes added, you want to make sure your root UFE scene is scene 0 in the build, or it's the scene at the top. Because the scene at the top is what Unity will load as the first scene in the build. And about builds, let's make our first one. The first thing you need to do is select the platform you want to build to. 
When we make our WebGL build, we'll click WebGL here and simply click Switch Platform. But if we wanted to build to, let's say, Android or Mac, we'd have to click over to their specific options, and you'll see that I personally don't have the Android module loaded. Well, you can click Install with Unity Hub, and then right here, Unity Hub should pop up, and it should give you options to add Android build support, Linux build support, and Mac build support if you haven't downloaded them already. But since I'm just building to Windows right now, I don't need any of that, and I'll just go up to Windows, Mac, and Linux. Here, I can also check whether or not I want this to be a development build or a final build. For my example, I'm going to keep it as a development build. With Windows selected, I'll click Build, and it will ask me what folder I want to build the finished game in. So I'll make a new folder called Dev Brawl Builds, and in that, I'll make a folder called Dev Brawl underscore Windows 64 build and select this folder to build in. After a few minutes, the build should complete and have a Windows EXE we can open. Now you can zip this up, put it on itch.io, or wherever you want to distribute your game. If you want to get fancy for an actual large-scale release, you can watch this tutorial by Brackies and make an installer for your game. Building for WebGL has a very similar process, but we have a few more steps when uploading to a website. Back in Build Settings, we'll switch on over to WebGL, click Switch Platform, then we've got to wait a bit. Now we'll click Build again. Here, we'll make a folder called Dev Brawl WebGL Build and build it to that. Once that is made, we can't just open this WebGL file like an .exe file. Different WebGL supported platforms have different specific rules you can look into, but to upload to itch.io, a web platform many Unity developers use for their HTML builds, what we need to do is go back, right click this folder, and in some way on Windows 10 or 11 here, you can just do send to compressed zip folder. On other operating systems, you may need to find other ways to zip up the folder but find some way to zip it so we can upload this to itch.io. At this point, I'll go to itch.io and upload a new project. I'll select that it's an HTML project, and I have a zip or HTML file that will be played in the browser. And then I'll scroll down a bit more, click Upload Files, and then I will upload the zipped Dev Brawl WebGL build, or whatever your game name is, WebGL build. Right here, I'm going to select this file will be played in the browser. And then for the embed options, I usually don't embed the game specifically in the page. I just go to the click to launch in full screen option. And while we're here, we might as well zip up and upload the Windows 64 build so both builds can be downloaded from the same source. And with that, I'll scroll down to the bottom and click save and view page and the game should be playable in my browser. You can go back to game settings and customize your page as much as you want, but you will eventually want to scroll to the bottom here and make your page public. Once the game is public, you can send your itch.io game link to your friends, customers, or anyone you want to play the game. And if you have online play set up, you can even have two WebGL versions of the game play each other in different tabs. And even though being able to play your fighting game in the browser is a cool way to quickly share your game with others, the WebGL platform Unity runs this on is infamous for bugs and issues. So we recommend that your main focus for release should be the buttery smooth standalone program builds. And with that, we're done. Our game is released. This specific demo game is full of bugs at the moment, and I may upgrade it for a final release, but you can play my buggy demo game I've been making in these tutorials with the link below, or as always, you can play the not buggy example game template below as well. And about links, remember to join our Discord so you can connect with other UFV users. If you make any finished game or prototype in Universal Fighting Engine, please share the link to that in the Discord, in the forms, or in the comments below. We love seeing UFE projects at any state of completion. So even if it's just screenshots on the form, please let us know what you're working on. I guarantee we'll love hearing about it. I've personally enjoyed making these tutorials. There may still be a few more minor tutorials after this one, but for me, 
I'm going to go back to my own YouTube channel where I talk about making games for non-gamers. So you can find me over at Etra's Games for Non-Gamers if you want to hear more of my beautiful voice. The creator of Universal Fighting Engine, Mr. Mind, has been great to work with. And I say creator as in singular, because Mr. Mind made this entire game engine by himself while also working full-time for another company. This niche engine occasionally gets enough money for him to hire someone like me to make tutorials and hire someone to help out with answering form posts. But if you have a specific question on the forms that takes a while to get an answer, do me a favor and have a little bit of grace when it comes to response time. Most likely an answer to your question is in the documentation, forms, or videos anyway, so definitely dig a bit if your questions aren't answered right away on the forms. Thank you all for taking this journey with me. I can't wait to see what you create. I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye.